Okay, I have done a bajillion tutorials, but the single most asked questions you guys have is how to do the areas between habitats, how to make these areas look good. Well, in today's video, we are finally looking at three different techniques, how to make the blank spaces between your beautiful habitats look, well, as beautiful as these habitats themselves. And I'm going to show you how easy you can do this without spending a million times. Because as we all know, it's not the most fun part, you know? We want to build habitats for our beloved animals. We want to build these things that guests actually go to. No one cares about plants in between or whatnot. No one cares about the blank green grass in between the two beautiful aquatic habitats you just built. You know, there is a lot that goes into building zoos, but no one really cares about what's in between, okay? We do. Today we do. So let's get started with the first of these techniques. And I'm going to have a little bit of a time lapse each time before I then explain to you what exactly I did, why I did it, and how you can reproduce that easily yourself. Hey, how about subbing to the channel and leave a like? Key thanks. Well, thanks, Bob. And with that, welcome to the first little time lapse in which I'm just quickly explaining what we are doing. So this time around, we are using a facility that is going to be in the middle of this blank space we have. And the facility itself is basically our um, instrument that we are using to block the views. And then we are utilizing a couple of pieces that we already had in the area. So it's very important that you keep on using what you already have. Don't don't start doing too many new things because that, that's not the space for that, you know? You have spent so much time doing great stuff in your areas around, why would you spend even more time in between? Use the stuff you already have, copy some things out of other areas and then just fit them nicely together. And before I forget, the one more important thing is use the bamboo, fountain bamboo or bengal bamboo. Bamboo is one of the most common used uh, plants in areas in zoos anyways, because it's growing great, it's don't, it doesn't really need that much care and it does block the views pretty nicely. And also you've seen, you Use the barriers. Use the barriers as fences because they actually work like that and so why not? And also, last but not least, you can also slam in a couple of decals here and there to make it all look a bit more natural. But I don't really need to talk too much more because you will now get a little tour of this area and I'm going a bit more in detail how I thought about certain things and why you would need to put certain things like this in with the three little statues. They have actually a pretty good reason for being in here, but more about that now in the real time. Right, we are done with the first area and as you can tell, <clears throat> this one is a very simple combination of nature and facilities. Actually, this is what many people forget about. Throughout an entire zoo, we need a lot of facilities, realistically. And the easiest way of thinking of that is putting them into the areas you don't really spend a lot of attention to anyway. So what you would do is, this is like a this is like a spot in my zoo. I didn't want to put a habitat in because, you know, we have a lot of very good ones in here. We've got the sea lions, we've got our entire Oceania area, and we have our otters uh, on the left-hand side. So there's a lot going on, and you would need a central point in here um, as of a backstage. I mean, obviously there is a couple of things uh, integrated in here, but we didn't have a spot for the vet station. And now we do have a vet station over here, including a workshop. And also I put some of the elements I already had in other backstage areas in here. Um, in this specific case, my uh, self-made dumpsters, you know? However, I wanna emphasize on that. These areas, you don't need to come up with new things. Um, one technique I always use is using pieces I already have. So you have seen at the beginning of the uh, little time lapse, I have used these rock formations I have already used uh, for this underground uh, path over here. So why not using them as like a, s a side barrier, okay? Because this is yeah, the area you want to cover up anyways. And once you are as a guest in here, you can see this now fits in very beautifully with these two areas. You see the building a tad bit, but that doesn't that doesn't take away too much from the overall area. But once you go around the corner, look at how nice this all looks. Very open and spacious. We could even put some more signs in and stuff, but at this point, I'm happy with how it looks. 
And once you go further, we have just kind of a little detail in here, you know, just to take away, like, we want to make people look at this rather than the building in the background, okay? So they, they just look at that. It's like a little trick to make people look at what you want them to look at. And then once they go further, obviously, it's way more, they're more ent en entertained and also attracted to the animals anyway. So there's like a little short connection in between. And sometimes you can't really do too much about it. They will see eventually something of the building and they will see eventually into the backstage area here. Yeah, you could put like a fence in, in the front if you want to. Uh, in my case, I thought it's not too bad, you know. You could put something in front, you don't need to. And then everything is already pretty nicely connected. And don't forget about using the barriers as your wonderful, uh, you know, fences at some point. You can use them easily as your fences. It is super simple. Uh, there's really not that much that goes into it. And as I quickly talked about in the time lapse with the nature, um, it is really important to utilize the nature to your advantage. Use some of the um, bamboo to really cover up areas you really want to cover up. So I wanted to separate this area from this area. So this is the, the hard kind of block I wanted to create, okay? So this is the viewing I wanted to block. This is why I used the fountain bamboo to make it really good. And then obviously don't overdo it. Use saplings. Saplings are a great way of kind of implying there is something to grow in the future and then you can also put some bigger trees in between to make it look good i mean you could easily go in and say you know this one is uh, these two saplings are nice but we are going to get rid of this one and instead we're going to put one grown up in the middle so that also kind of looks good you could even leave it the way it is right now so i think actually i like it the way I like this a bit more and one thing many many people forget and this is why i'm getting right back into it right now is using path elements they do change the vision of your area so dramatically so if you use that use some of the bins and just throw them around and put them in and initially your area will look a lot more complete a lot more coherent it's going to make more sense to your eyes because in in real zoos you have these things you know and you could easily go to facilities and then you can also if you want to uh go into guest facilities and put down some of the guest elements you know specifically some of the vending machines like if you find a spot that you feel like there is like a, a dead spot anyways it for example over here this could be utilized you know it's very close to the backstage and people would then be able to get to it anyway so you can actually utilize this space and just put a couple of things down here like so and maybe also get some drinks to it again like this you know obviously i'm using free build some of you will not be able to put them exactly like i did over here but you know that's the easiest way of doing it um and once you do not have free build you just put them next to the path it, it does the same anyways just gonna paint a bit of dirt down here so there you go it's integrated and this way your whole area looks so much more uh, finished but i promised you to do three so this is just one of them let's continue with the next one and i promise the next one is very simple Yay! And now we are back with another little tip and this is one of the most forgotten things in the game using the barriers to create little ponds you know the barriers can actually hold water which is beautiful and so you can literally use them to create these little ponds in every organic form that you want and this is also the reason why i make this a little bit more wonky over here which potentially i will redo uh, honestly after this uh, this whole video is recorded uh, it may not stay in here like the way it is but i wanted to showcase how to do that just slam it in then try to bring the path as close as possible to the barriers later on put a couple of benches here and there to you know round up the scene and then you can also utilize some stones some rocks and some other plants to just cover the bits in between and you know that's already it you've created a wonderful little element uh, to break with the overall plaza and uh, just make it look a lot more blended in very nicely but again as in the last part i'm going to explain a bit more in detail now in the real time part so i hope you enjoyed this tiny fraction of a time lapse Right, the next bit 
is a water feature, as you can tell over here. Now, these things are very often overlooked because people think it's super complicated to build them, but I have intentionally done this very, very simple and quick and dirty right now. It was less than 10 minutes to build this. So what I did is I, I you know, grabbed myself like a little area over here and I just connected the path uh, a little bit to make it a bit more uh, organic to feel, you know, and then I just slapped this little bottom water in the middle, ensure that you use the underlying uh, settings for your barriers so you can push it down and, you know, get very flat to the water. You could obviously change the fence to all of your likings, you know, I went with the concrete over here, uh, but you could also make it glass or wood, you know, just to showcase this to you real quick. You could just go in and say, you know, I just don't feel it. I want to have it all wood. Then you just do it. And then you've got this wooden kind of feature over here, which uh, I don't really like, but you know, it's fine. Also, if you like the colors of the stones, it doesn't matter. I would change it up now a little uh, to make it fit a bit more into the African area, you know, and you could just like go and put a palm tree in the center, maybe on a platform, have these fountains in. You could just recolor this little seating area. As you have seen, I just uh, have hidden, so I've hidden like two uh, different types of, uh, what was that, benches in here. I could just easily go and make that look even a bit more organic, you know, just not like too crabby in here, whatever. It's, it's just to showcase how easily you can, you know, make this look good. And now you can see there are like three of these patches and now there are a couple of ways to do that. But what I figure, and this is part of the tutorial, so I left that in, um, I, I thought it's better to make it with you in real time. Uh, normally, I would say cover them up, but this is already quite a huge plaza and it feels a little bit overdone, you know? And at this point, what I would do is check your zoo, what else you have in your zoo relatively often. And I like this tree, for example, quite a bit over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this tree and I'm gonna throw that over into this spot over here too. So that is quite good. So that breaks the whole thing as well to make it a bit more nice looking. And then if we look over here, something we also quite often have is, um, for example, this type of tree, the Scots Pine. So we're going to put the Scots Pine in this spot over here. And then this one over here, I don't want to do something too big because that could throw some stuff off. But as we are in Africa, we could do one highlight tree. You know, this is like a temperate area zoo, but still we could put a palm tree in just one palm tree as they do grow in our region quite nicely anyways already. Um, you could now go and, for example, put a Nikao palm in and then just look which one fits the best from your size. Or you go, for example, with the date palm could also work you know put like the bigger one in here too um honestly i quite like this one you know and once you've done that there are several ways of, of keeping this look nice um one thing i most likely do is i'm going to type in mulch and then i'm going to use some of the smaller ones sometimes the bigger one it doesn't matter use the smaller one uh, make sure it's aligning to the ground and then i'm just going to slap them in to cover up this bit it's like a little bit ugly you know i would like really go in and make it nice looking so that the corners look a bit more nice this way you know you have it and then you can do the same over here just to make that look good um, the more time you spend obviously the better it can look but this is just a way of doing it this specific case over here it looks a bit light nicer so what I would do over here is maybe just give it some soil and there you go see this is already how this area has been transformed from being a little bit of a very odd looking area I tried to put like some meerkats in between but I thought you know maybe that's not the best way of doing it and so I ended up doing this and honestly this gives also a bit more space to our West African line and so I was also a little sneak peek. I'm still a mad fan of this. If you want to check out this video, uh, I'm going to link it to the top right now. This is uh, still one of my favorite realistic habitats I've done. But yeah, so this is that and you want to see the third part. Shall we get there? I guess we should. Let's do it. Right, the last one is my favorite one when it comes to the overall atmosphere of a zoo. This one is going to be a playground. Yeah, fairly simple, fairly obvious, but uh, a lot of time neglected, even by me. I mean, I've done some for Koali Beach, I've done one for Yosemite Valley at the beginning. Uh, we still don't have one in Zoo Sicily though. But yeah, there's really not that much to say about this. I utilized some very cool blueprints from the workshop. I highly encourage to do that again as well. Uh, you do the same because there have been very talented people who created some very cool playground elements and they look fairly the same. So there's really no point in doing them yourself all the time. Uh, however, if you have a 
a certain piece that you want, you should do it yourself. But other than that, there are very talented people on the workshop who have already done that. And then you can just easily create a little playground in between, add some realism to your scene, but also blend into areas that you before just looked at as a ugly little slam of land. So uh, yeah, really hope that this makes sense to you. If not, follow the next couple of minutes in the real time part. And last but not least, my personal favorite, the playground. And you can see I took a couple of items from uh, the workshop. Honestly, people have been doing so many great things that I feel like it's totally fine to use these things. Um, they're from Amber and Kingdom. If I remember correctly, I'm going to put them uh, down in the description below. And if not, you just uh, go to the workshop and type in playground and you're going to find them because those have been one of the best linked ones to the top you'll find there. Uh, so yeah, this is it. Uh, there is a little playground and you can see there is was just uh, a keeper right away coming around so if you want to make this even more nice you could put in some barriers to the ground so that they don't run straight through certain things uh, but I wanted to showcase a couple of uh, nice tricks I learned over the time because I have already done a couple of playgrounds one thing you can see in action which is kind of cool that this actually happened um, because as the people have a hitbox with the ball, um, specifically the keepers, um, this ball is going to run around. And if you have the ball within this wonderful uh, forage box, then it's going to stay in here, most likely. Sometimes if they hit it too hard, it's going to fly out, but it's going to stay in here, so that's kind of cool. Um, and the forage box itself um, looks a little bit like those things you have most often in these uh, little playgrounds. Uh, they're kind of, it's not tarmac, but it's, it's kind of something uh, on the ground where the kids can play on, so it's a bit more soft you know from if they fall down or land down there um, so yeah that, you, you can use that one uh, underneath certain things I could just you know just take that and copy it uh, under this, this swing over here too uh, or sometimes you just lower it down into the ground but it's also fine to have the barrier uh, sometimes I just don't like it over there to be honest but you know just keeping it where it is but um, this is almost it you know using the sand pit a couple of these conservation uh, items which I think looks fun uh, using the tennis ball in there too using some of the enrichment items and obviously using some of the uh, education items to make the people actually go and use this area, you know, so that they start actually interacting with the playground. This is where this comes in. And the more I think about this, the more I really wish that uh, in the future we are going to have actual playground items uh, just like those, you know, just like those little kids education things would be lovely. Okay, this is why you should potentially put barriers down at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's looking kind of cool. You know, if the people run through here, let, let them just run a little bit further. So there you go. Uh, you have this wonderful vista of the playground. Look at that. This is, yeah, I think I just like it. I think I just really, really do like it. Okay, anyways, let's do a quick summary of uh, today's video because we are already done. And uh, you have seen three different methods how to connect certain areas. We have cleaned up our areas over here quite dramatically. We started with this one over here uh, using facilities and nature to blend in your areas and a little reminder always use items that have already been in your zoo um, don't do everything new just keep on doing what you've already done use items from the environments nearby to blend them also you know content wise nicely in and also use backstage elements and stuff you've already used uh, in your area as well so you will have the main success in here by doing so and also remember to be very careful with the pieces you put in to not overdo it and also remember to use barriers for example as fences in order to save some time doing all these nitty fences that you would normally do in other areas. Second bit is a little water feature as we can tell over here. Use the barriers to create a little pond and then just blend in the other open spaces or you can do it vice versa just build the path and then fit the little water bottom in uh, in the middle and always remember to use the underlining uh, sector uh, section or settings to make sure that they um, can be put down uh, or lower down as much as you want to so that is the second bit and the third bit flying all the way over to the last one we did over here is a little playground that keeps the people and uh, the kids busy while the parents can uh, have a little quiet minute you know uh, me being a parent for a while now I do know how much of a uh, of a trait that is uh, once you have a little bit of a moment uh, where the kids can just power up a little on the slides or so and you can just uh, for a second sit down drink something 
uh, that is that is very much needed. So yeah, that's been it. And I really hope you guys are absolutely inspired now to blend in your areas. We still don't have a name for the zoo, by the way. So if you want to go mad in the comments what the zoo could be called, after all, let me know in the comments down below. And obviously, as always, if I uh, should do something else, you better stick with me on this channel because there is going to be so much more inspiration stuff for you in the future. I'm going to do so many more other builds. I have so much weird stuff in the pipeline. Uh, you can't even imagine there is so much stuff i'm enjoying myself so much right now and i do hope it's uh, going to translate into the videos but uh for this video obviously the most important uh, important bit was to give you three ideas how to blend in your areas and most likely you can also combine those you know you can combine facilities with playgrounds you can combine water features with playgrounds and so on and so forth but only make sure that the kids don't go in there and drown yeah that's it see you in the next one bye